presentation is going to be from Edward Kim. Edward has built learning mechanics, oh, sorry, <laughs> machines and AIs for large companies and is published in many articles and patents. Whenever you're ready, Edward. Cool, thanks so much for the uh, warm introduction. Can everyone hear me? Good, okay, cool. Um, yeah, let me let me share my screen. I have some uh, slides here. Let's see if I can get this to work right. Cool. Can everyone see this uh, set of slides? We're good. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks. So yeah, my name is uh, Edward Kim. Um, graduated CHCI back in 2010, uh, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about becoming an AI scientist. And so AI, that's artificial intelligence. Uh, if you think about everyday artificial intelligence, these are things like Alexa, Siri, autocomplete, Face ID, those kind of technologies, it's sort of a learn from data. Uh, so I thought I'd start with a little bit of like, you know, cool, cool science I've done over the years, eventually leading me on the track to doing um, AI for both my studies and then my job. Um, so over here in the lower left, this is a, a battery cell component. And so while I was in my undergraduate degree, in university, I spent some time researching how to make like new nanostructured rechargeable batteries. So these are the kinds of things you might see in like cars and uh, cell phones. Um, and then at the bottom right, that's uh, it's a particle accelerator. So this is an electron accelerator in Saskatoon. It's uh, it's about the size of a football field to give you a sense of scale. So if you look kind of here, this is like a door that like a person would go to in an office. Uh, so really a very large device. Um, you can think of it kind of like um, like a laser beam that's many millions of times stronger than the sun. And you can like fire it at materials to study their atomic structure. Uh, and so I spent some time there as well. Um, and, you know, so I kind of went on this journey through was like different kinds of research, different sorts of physics and chemistry stuff. Uh, but I ultimately landed on uh, studying and, and doing artificial intelligence for my job. So that's the top right there. Uh, this is at a uh, large conference in Boston. So I'm sort of standing at the left here. I'm teaching a tutorial to uh, graduate students, professors, industry professionals on using um, artificial intelligence to uh, automatically connect the, the structure of different molecules to certain properties, like how they might bind to certain drugs or dissolve in certain liquids. Um, and, uh, you know, just in a nutshell, the kind of work I, I, I do with that is, you know, understanding like data sets from different, um, different chemicals, different materials, trying to use that to teach a computer to make predictions about, uh, you know, in this case, how, how different molecules might actually be useful for, uh, for everyday applications. Um, okay, so that's some stuff I've done. Uh, just, just for interest, like science is kind of, you know, you think of it as happening in a lab or at a computer, but, but the reality is, you know, it happens all over the world by, often people meeting up, exchanging ideas. We'll get a little less so now because, you know, people aren't really traveling, but, you know, in, in the before times people were. So uh, these are some of the places I've been for sort of different research reasons. So on the left is Cologne, Germany. Uh, and there's the Cologne Cathedral there. Um, this part of Germany is a big center for chemical manufacturing. Uh, in the middle, this is in uh, Berkeley uh, at a, a National um, Department of Energy Research Lab. So overlooking the San Francisco Bay, um, and on the right here is at, at a uranium mining site in the very northern part of the province of Saskatchewan. This is in um, December, so it was like negative 50 or something. Uh, so all kinds of different sceneries and places you can go if, um, you know, if you are, are doing this type of science or, you're, you know, working with teams of all kinds of people across the world, uh, combining different ideas and skills uh, to solve interesting problems. Um, so, so where am I now? Uh, so if I think about the past like year or two of, of my career, uh, what I ultimately do is I lead teams of scientists uh, and we use computers. So this is the AI part. Um, and in two of my, uh, so my current job, my previous job, what I've done is uh, designing stronger materials uh, for mining equipment, cars, other kinds of vehicles. And the way we did this was we went to, you know, large scale, um, like 24 seven production uh, sites and, uh, you can think of like large, like, you know, manufacturing plants and uh, looked at the data they had in the lab, uh, kind of fed that into a computer and mathematical algorithms to predict like, oh, I need this much of chemical A and this much of chemical B at this kind of temperature for this time to figure out how to, can you make materials that are even stronger than the ones you already have. Uh, 
what I do today is a little bit different. Um, I work for sort of a financial software company and we help small businesses understand their finances. These are things like using computers to automatically scan receipts, understand where people's money are, is going and how they can make sure their bills are paid uh, next month, you know, for the rental of their storefront or something like that. Um, so these are pretty different things, right? Like, like these are my last two jobs. They're in a sense, they're kind of quite different, uh, but they do have some common threads. What I want to emphasize here that is that careers are really diverse, right? Don't, don't stress too much about fitting in the box. I remember when I was in high school, I thought like, if I was going to be a scientist, that means I need to like wear a lab coat and, uh, you know, pour things into flasks. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. There's a lot of ways you can do that. Um, okay, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about the journey of how I got here. Um, before I get into this, uh, maybe there's like a couple of caveats. One, it's a highlight reel. Um, two, in the interest of being like informative, I'll, I'll be straightforward about sort of some of this, but uh, also I want to highlight, this is like a way to get to a particular career, uh, not necessarily the template for anything beyond that. Um, okay. So starting at the left, this is Cameron Heights. Uh, what did I do? I mean, mostly I was involved in a lot of science activities. So I did science fair. I took a lot of science classes. Um, and, and then ultimately, you know, applied to university programs for sciences and engineering. I ultimately ended up going to University of Guelph, um, uh, mainly because of a scholarship that I got there and because I liked the university, like the campus and the program. Um, so I studied nanoscience there with a minor in physics. Uh, and there I got exposed to a lot of research. Uh, I looked at particle accelerators, battery design. Uh, this is the sort of the photos I showed earlier with the mining sites. Um, and from there, I thought, okay, like science is pretty cool. I can do more research. Maybe I'll apply to PhD programs. Um, so I applied to a few and then got into MIT. Uh, and so um, I guess for context, MIT, it's, a, it's an engineering school uh, near Boston and um, highly ranked for engineering. Um, and so while I was there doing a PhD program, I published a lot of research. It was cited a lot in the field. Um, and uh, ultimately, that led me to my first job. So I worked at Pfizer a bit while I was a student at MIT, uh, out of MIT, um, uh, this startup called Citrine that did uh, chemical informatics, had read some of my research, and so they hired me onto their science team. And then from there, I transitioned to where I am now. Uh, so at zero, I'm a principal scientist. So I lead and, and manage a team of scientists. Um, we serve a couple million users. We work with sort of billions of data points every day uh, and you know, make algorithms that make all kinds of predictions about financial data of the world. Okay, so that was kind of a whirlwind of sort of how I went this path. It's very academic, focuses on school just because my career happens to be very academic. Um, but what I really wanna highlight is that like, yeah, th th this is a highlight reel, right? Sometimes when you ask people about the past of how they got to where they are now, it's like this like linear path of a bunch of successes stacked on top of each other. Uh, but it's not really reality, right? Like, I know people will say failure is everywhere, but I want to emphasize like people often fail at a thing and then you like pivot to something you're better at, which is, which is totally fine, it's a good strategy. But even on the path you're on, like the path you decide to go on, there's, there's still gonna be lots of failure. So I want to sort of share some of that. For example, yeah, I did pretty well at Cameron Heights. I got good grades and all that, got a scholarship. I also failed many, many scholarship applications and interviews. Like there are many interviews I terribly, terribly bombed, so, uh, but you only need one, right? You only need one um, to, to work out well. Uh, I went to Guelph, you know, I, I was really happy about getting to MIT. Didn't get in everywhere though, right? I, I got rejected from Harvard and Cornell. Um, so, you know, that, that happens too. I remember at MIT, I thought like, all right, now I made it. I'm into MIT, like that's a good school. Uh, I'm fine, right? Everything's set, but you know, I, classes are really, really hard. So I got a place in academic information. Like my grades at MIT were not good. Up until that point, like straight A's at MIT, like B's and C's. Uh, and the qualifying exams are really hard as well. So these are things that I was just like, wasn't used to content that was that hard. To be clear, not, not to scare anyone who's thinking about this path, but just to say that like, um, you should expect that along this path towards success, th there will be tough things too. Um, so then going to jobs, you know, I got some good jobs. There are also jobs I didn't get. I got some really good promotions and raises, but also ones I didn't get. So really, I just want to emphasize here that, you know, it's, it's easy to condense like, you know, kind of a 10 year journey here into this, like moving from point to point, success to success. Uh, but, but, you know, when you live through it, it's never quite that simple. 
Cool. And, and the other thing I want to emphasize here is that even if you go to like the very left of that diagram where I was starting on Cameron Heights, when, when I look back on it, it looks like it's really obvious, right? That like, oh yeah, okay, I was just in high school. I was just going to go to university and then do the next thing, the next thing. But it didn't look like that at the start, right? When I was making these slides, I was really thinking about in high school. Like I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, I could go to University of Guelph. That's ultimately what I did. Could have gone to Korea. So for uh, reference, I'm, I'm Korean. I could have also just not gone to university. I could have um, you know, coded websites. That was actually a thing I was strongly considering because it was interesting. Uh, I could have also gone back to Cameron Heights and just thought about it for another year and take more courses. Um, what I want to emphasize here is that when you look back at where, like how you got to where you are, it looks kind of clear that at any given moment in your present, like there's always going to be uncertainty. Um, that's totally fine, right? It looks like that for me now too, and with a different set of choices, but there's always some uncertainty um, and that's totally cool. Okay, so, so wrapping this up here. Um, so where I am now, I, talk, I talked a lot about my career, about science, about this like path to becoming this scientist and publishing papers and all that stuff. What, what I also wanna highlight is that that's like one piece of, of, of where I'm at. And when you think, when you're in high school and you're thinking like, what am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do after that? Like often people fixate on their career where they're going to school, um, there'd be other things as well. But I guess what I want to say here is that, you know, there's a lot of things, right? Yes, I'm a scientist. I work at the company that's this little blue thing here. Uh, it's called Zero, But lots of other things too, right? I, I like to bake. I play video games. I go camping. I have a dog. Um, I still have a lot of friends, like close friends that went to Cameron Heights. Um, so in fact, the friends you have right now, if you're in high school, you, you may still be friends with them in a decade, right? Like there, there are a lot of ways life can go, a lot of aspects to that. Um, yeah, so don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Cool. I think that's it. Thanks so much.